Tease hard to imagine, but the idea of flying in something electric first sparked more than 140 years ago, thanks to the bold vision of a French inventor. In a time when most people saw flight as science fiction, and batteries were anything but reliable, he dared to think of taking to the skies without a drop of fuel. The concept of electric flight was groundbreaking, yet in the 19th century, batteries were heavy, short-lived, and lacked the power to support sustained flight. Fast forward to today, and battery technology has advanced drastically with big names like Tesla, Apple, and Samsung pushing the limits. However, even the best electric car battery still can't keep a plane in the air for long. Why? Well, it all comes down to energy density. A single round of airplane fuel holds about 60 times more energy than a similar sized battery. So if you tried to power a plane with batteries, you'd need a fuel tank 60 times larger, filled entirely with batteries. But batteries are heavy, really heavy. You'd need to design a plane powerful enough to handle that weight, which would, in turn, require even more batteries to keep it aloft, creating a cycle that ends in a massive, unwieldy plane that can't really fly anywhere. Despite these challenges, engineers haven't given up. They're searching for the right balance between weight and power to bring electric flights to life. In 1973, two pioneers made history by placing an electric engine on a glider and managing to keep it in the air for a brief 14 minutes. It might not seem like much, but it was enough to mark the world's first manned electric aircraft flight. A few years later, another attempt stretched the time to 35 minutes. Powered by a tiny 3.5 horsepower engine and a borrowed helicopter battery, this plane even had solar panels on its wings. Unfortunately, the sun doesn't charge very fast, and 35 minutes of airtime doesn't take you far but these flights were huge milestones. Electric engines work wonders in pilotless planes, which are usually much lighter. Without a pilot, seats, doors, or extra weight, these small aircraft can reach new heights. In the 1990s, NASA's Pathfinder drone set an altitude record at 71,000 feet with nothing but a strong battery and solar power. In 1990, the Sunseeker I, a solar-powered plane, achieved something even bolder, it crossed the entire United States with only an electric engine. It wasn't a non-stop flight, it took 21 flights and around 121 hours of airtime, but it was an incredible achievement. For comparison, commercial flights today take only about 5 hours to do the same journey in one stretch. Over time, technology got better, and that's where the Solar Impulse project took flight, literally. With an impressive wingspan about the size of the massive Airbus A380, the Solar Impulse was covered in solar panels. Unlike the early gliders, these panels actually helped recharge the plane as it soared through the sky, allowing it to remain airborne for unprecedented periods. As part of its around-the-world journey, it managed a remarkable five-day, non-stop flight between Japan and Hawaii, covering over 4,000 miles. Five days might sound excessive for a trip that typically takes about eight hours, but keep in mind that the Solar Impulse cruised at a leisurely 45 miles per hour. That's practically like having your grandma in the fast lane, yet it demonstrated the future potential for clean, renewable air travel. Of course, it's one thing to design an experimental plane, and another to create one fit for everyday flights. Before a new plane takes off commercially, it has to go through a rigorous certification process. Every component, every screw, nut, bolt, and wire, must meet strict safety standards, which can take years. But some ambitious engineers, sidestep this by modifying existing planes instead. They swap out old, fuel-hungry engines for electric ones, taking advantage of electric motors' lighter, more compact design. However, the hefty weight of the batteries means these modified planes can only manage short trips, often just enough to show that electric flight is possible. 
the pollution factor can't be ignored. Jet planes produce nearly a billion tons of CO2 every year, putting a major strain on the environment. Surprisingly, half of all flights worldwide are less than 500 miles, distance is easily within reach of electric planes. For these short-haul routes, electric planes could be an ideal solution. Many of these short flights barely have time to reach cruising altitude before starting their descent, making them feel almost as inefficient as driving to your mailbox in a tank. Each hour in the air is costly for airlines and has a significant environmental impact. The future could see small, efficient electric planes handling these regional flights, saving money, and slashing emissions. Now comes Alice, the aircraft many see as the future of short-haul electric flight. Built by aviation, Alice might soon become the world's first fully electric commercial aircraft, able to carry nine passengers and two crew members. Picture it as a sleek, high-tech bird with three propellers, two on the wings and one on the V-shaped tail. Although as long as a school bus, Alice is incredibly lightweight, thanks to its composite material construction, similar to what's used in boat design. It has batteries everywhere, in the wings, the tail, even the nose, taking up 60% of the plane's weight. With a range of 650 miles, it could make a round trip from LA to Vegas twice before needing a recharge. It may not match the speed of conventional jets, cruising at 275 miles per hour, but it has a major selling point, cost. Alice only costs about $200 per hour to fly, much cheaper than traditional planes. But what's the holdup? Like electric cars, electric planes need infrastructure. There are nearly 20,000 airports in the United States, most of which sit unused because they're too costly for airlines to service. Alice, however, could change that. It's quieter, cleaner, and less expensive to maintain. Future airports could look very different, small, stylish, quiet, and filled with mobile chargers instead of fuel trucks. For a one-hour flight, Alice needs about a 30-minute recharge. While that's manageable for shorter flights, longer journeys would require significant downtime for recharging. Despite all these advances, battery technology remains the biggest hurdle. Modern lithium-ion batteries come with limitations, they're heavy, flammable, and degrade over time, losing their charge after multiple recharges. The next generation, lithium sulfur batteries, promises greater power and environmental friendliness, but they wear out quickly. Hybrid planes, combining fuel and battery power, might bridge the gap, similar to hybrid cars. Small, two-seater planes using hybrid engines already exist. They take off on electric power and switch to fuel at cruising altitude, with some engines even recharging the battery mid-flight, much like a car battery recharges while driving. While electric isn't the only answer, biofuels offer a promising alternative. Planes using biofuel or plant-based oils are in development, though they tend to be smaller. And there's another potential game-changer on the horizon, pilotless planes. Many long-haul flights already rely heavily on autopilot, and technology is moving closer to fully automated commercial planes. Although it might be unsettling for passengers to imagine an empty cockpit, automation could reduce human errors, which are a significant cause of aviation accidents. In time, passengers may even prefer it. Imagine a future with air-driven cabin crews or drones delivering drinks right to your seat. As technology progresses, who knows how far we'll go. And with the world aiming for a greener, cleaner future, it's likely we'll see some exciting changes in aviation in the coming years.